So, hello everyone. Um, so, the title is Time Domain Encoding and Measurements. Um, okay, it works. So, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I'll be talking about quantum communication based on both um, polarization and frequency uh, entanglement. So, the main goal is to improve the distance of quantum communication by using the resources that we have uh, at hand. So sometimes those uh, resources are not that obvious. Um, okay, so let me uh, start with a brief introduction. Uh, so this is a, let's say, generic um, setting, experimental or practical setting in which we have a parametric down conversion source, the source of a source of a photon pairs, and we want to distribute, let's say, a quantum key to Alice and Bob. We use uh, fibers as uh, quantum channels, and yeah, in the end, in the end, we want to perform a quantum key distribution or a, a quantum communication uh, protocol. Um, there are some problems in practice uh, related to physical uh, implementation. So those um, channels, um, like fibers, they, they have some limitations, like um, chromatic dispersion, and also um, detectors are, are not perfect. So, um, sometimes we can use, okay, uh, in practice, we can use a polarization entanglement to perform quantum key distribution or, or quantum communication, and um, the distance is limited by features of quantum channel and uh, detector. So there's chromatic dispersion here, and there are some dark counts on the detector side. So what we can do, we can also use um, frequency entanglement or spectral entanglement in order to extend the length of the, uh, of the protocol. So it means that uh, by using um, time resolved measurements, uh, we can narrow down the wave, pike, uh, wave packet duration, and this way we can filter out some of, uh, some of the noise. So in this case, this is just introduction, so that's gonna be very brief. So this is the key generation rate as a, a function of the, of the distance, uh, as a function of this guy here. And as you can see, if there is no uh, entanglement, then let's say the distance is of the order of 150 uh, kilometers. If we use um, yeah, time stamping, if we use, um, if we use uh, time resolved uh, measurements, we can, uh, let's say, significantly uh, improve uh, this distance. Uh, so again, the problem is the dispersion here in, in, in fibers, because the dispersion stretches the uh, temporal mode uh, of the result of the photon which travels through uh, through the fiber, but uh, yeah, let's assume that uh, SPDC source is on the on one end, and we want to send a key or a photon to uh, let's say to Bob. Um, then it turns out that we still need some chromatic dispersion in order um, for this protocol to work. So uh, let's assume that uh, this distance here is of the order of 200 uh, kilometers, and yeah, on this axis we have the distance, we have the length of this of this fiber. So as you can see, there is uh, in this range of uh, distances of the length of the fiber, um, quantum key distribution protocol is not possible. If we have too much of the fiber here, then again it is not possible. So there is a uh, well-defined range of length of this fiber that allows to perform um, quantum key distribution in this, in this case. Okay, so those were two examples where uh, something that um, people from uh, telecommunication does not like, which we uh, do not like, which uh, is chromatic dispersion, which we use in favor uh, of uh, uh, those uh, protocols. So what else can we uh, do with that? So uh, this is actually the main uh, topic uh, which I want to uh, explain. So this is uh, work with uh, Kardina Sanjak Kasparovic, uh, who is a PhD student working with me, and two postdocs, Artur Czerwiński and Mikołaj Lasota. Um, so the basic scheme is depicted here. So uh, this is a, it's a classic 
uh, scenario in which we have um, time bin encoding. So let's say we have one wave packet, which we, um, we say uh, um, is zero. The other one is related to uh, cat one. In practice, this is, yeah, this is in, in the time domain. So we, we use these, uh, let's say, Gaussian uh, um, profiles to describe them. So what, is, uh, what are the basis, uh, the basis vectors? Those are uh, defined here. So as you can see, uh, those functions are, are Gaussian. So the overlap here uh, is close to zero. So in, practice, uh, in theory, this is not zero, but experimentally, that can be arbitrarily uh, small. So if, if the distance uh, between these two wave packets is uh, around four times uh, that long as compared to um, the width of those wave packets, then this is of the order of 0.1%, uh, which is good from experimental point of view. Okay, so um, then those two wave packets, they can actually, there can be one photon, um, which is localized in uh, those two wave packets, and this photon travels in a, a single mode fiber. So then uh, those two wave packets, they, 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 they stretch and they, they start to overlap. So in the end, at the, at the other end of the fiber, if we have access to time result measurements, this is what we, uh, this is the statistics of uh, arrival times that we can uh, measure. So um, yeah, this is how it can look like in, in practice. And this is uh, what theory says. So this is, um, um, this is uh, a sum of those two terms. So those are the modes which propagated through a dispersive uh, medium. Um, okay, so this is what the detector can measure, but we can take a look on this expression from the other point of view. So we can, we can uh, let's say, rephrase this expression in terms of uh, measurement operator and the input state. So the input state um, would be defined as a combination of uh, cat zero and, and cat one, and the measurement operator can be uh, defined in, uh, in this way using those uh, mode functions. So if we, if we rewrite uh, this expression in this form, then we can uh, associate um, um, those um, measurement operators. And we can, uh, okay, we can, we can build POVM and this POVM can be visualized on, on the block sphere. So as you can see, it is related to this kind of spiral, uh, and 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 those those points are parameterized with um, with the time of arrival of our photon. So uh, this is nice in in theory because yeah we have um, pretty nice uh, coverage on a, a block sphere. In practice, we have to take into account the length of the fiber, so the amount of the dispersion that we have in the system. And we have to take into account also the detector jitter. So if there is no jitter, of course, the, 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 those points are uh, on the surface of the block, not on, on the surface of the block ball. But if we take into account jitter, then we have uh, this kind of squeezing towards, uh, yeah, towards the inner part of uh, of the block uh, sphere. So yeah, this is the convolution. So the measurement operator is then. Uh, kind of uh, convolution, convolution of the initial perfect uh, POVM and the profile of uh, detector jitter. So uh, the intuitions are the, the following. If we have too much dispersion, so the dispersion squeezes that um, spiral in this direction and ti um, timing jitter of the detector squeezes that in, in this direction. All right, so what can we do with those uh, measurements? Because yeah, in practice, if we have too much of the dispersion, then as you can see, uh, those points, which represent uh, POVM, they are very close to the uh, equator of, uh, of the block sphere. So it means that um, our, this POVM is uh, more sensitive for the phase of, uh, of the state, which, okay, so if we want to use POVM for quantum tomography, uh, then it, can, it feels better the phase, it does not feel too well, the feeling, you know, 
uh, it's maybe not precise, but yeah, it, it is not uh, sensitive that much for the amplitudes. Now, uh, so let's let's see what is the phase estimation that we can uh, perform with this kind of um, with, the, with this kind of uh, measurement. Um, so our state, which is the state that we want to use for the phase estimation, is of this of this form. So the amplitudes are the same, but there is only this phase factor that we want to uh, estimate. Um, all right, so here, this is the fidelity between the expected state and the one that we get from the full tomography. And this is the um, length of the fiber. So the amount which measures the amount of the dispersion that we have in the, uh, in the system. So as you can see, uh, if, we, if we use, the, depending on the timing jitter of our uh, detector, of the detector, um, it can um, at some point uh, pretty well um, estimate the uh, the phase of uh, of this kind of uh, state. Okay, so this is for single qubit, uh, so we don't need an fancy uh, source for uh, single photon that that could have been done with uh, attenuated laser. But if we want to switch to entanglement, uh, the scenario that that scenario can be um, um, adapted. So let's assume that we have a nonlinear medium which is pumped with uh, two pulses. So there is certain phase between those two pulses, so they, they have to be co coherent. And uh, yeah, the phase relation must be fixed. Uh, if those two pulses pump nonlinear medium, then uh, the phase between those two pulses uh, is uh, conserved in two photons. So one photon is generated, let's say here, the other photon is generated here and the phase relation between these two uh, photons is conserved and fixed uh, and is uh, the same as the phase between the initial um, classical pulses which we used to pump uh, this nonlinear uh, medium. So in the end we have um, entangled state of zero, uh, 0 plus 1 1 with the phase factor uh, in between. So this is a very uh, simple scenario which allows to generate um, entanglement in, uh, time, in, in time domain. Okay, so in practice, uh, we can use pulsed laser, Maxander interferometer <laughs> with two output ports. I'm almost, almost done. Uh, with two output ports. Uh, so one, one output port can be used to monitor the phase between uh, the classical pulses we, 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 which we use for pumping and the other, uh, the other uh, output port is used to pump nonlinear crystal. Then we have a classical uh, photodiode, which is used as a, a clock, and yeah, two nonlinear, uh, sorry, two, two dispersive uh, media, which, uh, which are yeah, single mode fibers, and superconducting single photon detectors, which outputs are monitored by an oscilloscope. So in practice, this kind of measurement can be done using um, a spool of fiber. So this is, this is uh, around uh, five, uh, um, five kilometers. This is five kilometer fiber in one, one of those uh, reels. And yeah, this is a detector. If, if uh, we have that, then we can use uh, an oscilloscope which monitors those two output ports to, 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 to get this kind of data. This is the time of arrival of the first photon and, and the second photon. And these data can be used uh, then for uh, quantum state tomography. So based on these data, we can have uh, those, um, uh, the, the, we can uh, tomographically, tomographically reconstruct uh, the state. And in this uh, particular uh, case, we, we got the fidelity, which is 0.88% uh, uh, and the purity of 89%. Um, okay, so in, in summary, I, I was talking about uh, time result measurements, uh, which are based on the dispersion, which is um, always in the, uh, optical setup and we use that for the phase estimation and, and quantum uh, tomography. Oh, and there is a small advertisement if uh, anyone is interested in this kind of research or related, there are some openings in my group uh, for postdocs, PhD candidates and students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So other questions? Nothing?
So I didn't get the, this plot about phase estimation that it's better the longer the distance. So does it refer to classical pulses or to single photons? Single photons. Uh, so, so how come that you can improve so much? I mean, so because you show fidelity, but if you showed precision uh, on delta phi, what would be <laughs> what it would be? I, I don't know. What, because what, it looks what, like what, it improves <laughs> to arbitrary well. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But the the, the reason is that. Um, Okay, so the, the, the longer the fiber, um, uh, th th those points, they are squashed towards the uh, equator. But then on the other hand, um, you have timing jitter. So if you don't have enough uh, dispersion, then your pulse in the end is uh, small as compared to the timing jitter of your detector. So this is the trade-off between the amount of the dispersion that you have in your system and the resolution that is defined by the timing jitter of, of the detector. So there is two competing uh, effects. So that's why uh, we need enough fiber to secure enough dispersion in order to cover the temporal duration of the resulting uh, wave packet um, uh, to, to, to be comparable with uh, the timing jitter of, of the detector. So this is a consequence of um, uh, parameters of the experimental setup. So chromatic dispersion and timing yeah, but jitter. Even with, without this timing jitter, I don't understand why do we improve so much. Um, I, I cannot get this intuition. But okay, and maybe uh, okay, I need to think. Because I mean, single photon in superposition of being in two places and relative phase between these two things, and then yeah, but how you can improve, improve through some, in a sense, unitary transformation, yes? Yeah, but at the beginning you don't have uh, any resolution, right? Because your, your pulse is very, very small uh, in time. So then you, you, you have to, let's say, sample your pulse, your wave packet, and you don't have enough uh, resolution. Yeah, but if I just look in Hilbert space, like, two vec like, like a vector, and what happens? Um, yeah, but then you don't also don't have um, uh, where where is that? So what I said, just if there is anyone listening online, is that when you have no timing jitter, then you can resolve already the two, uh, the two, the zero and one by, yeah, by but, measurement but, in time. But then you have no phase information. Yeah, exactly. but then you have no phase information because your your measurement is not sensitive for the phase because. Yeah, maybe I, uh, I should need tell some dispersion that. to get the phase relationship. Yeah, because then you, you, the you are sensitive for the north. Uh, okay. you, your measurement is at the north and south pole. So okay. then there is no, okay, no, no phase think, sensitivity. Okay. okay, thanks. Yeah, there is another question. Thank you. Um, in, your, uh, in your modeling, um, do you take into account the fact that maybe uh, in this fiber there there are also phase fluctuations induced by no, no, no. I don't know, vibration, temperature, etc. that may scrubble the information? No, we, we don't take that. Because at some point, when you increase and increase the length, this uh, maybe will... Yeah, more. but we, we assume that the time scales of those uh, fluctuations of the length of the fiber are long, are, are, yeah, long yeah. enough such that the photons can travel, okay. that the portion of photons so can travel. So this is an error which is negligible on short... Uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. So yeah, if those time scales are comparable, that, that wouldn't uh, really work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I have a, a question, not a comment. Uh, so, with for those time bin qubits, you typically, like we traditionally use an unbalanced Max Zender interferometer for tomography and for phase measurements. So, for tomography, I, I see a clear advantage because you get all those different POVMs by just clicks at different times. So, you don't need to adjust the phase in the inter yeah. interferometer uh, to do the tomography. What about the the, the, the phase measurement, wouldn't it be simpler to, to use an unbalanced Max Zender? Uh, yeah, we, we don't have this comparison. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, but cannot answer it right now. Okay. Thank you.
Are there any other questions? So in this case, I will, uh, we will move to the next speaker and thank you, Piotr. Thank you.